Well, hey there, it's Liz Rohr from Real World MP, and you're watching MP Practice Made Simple, the weekly videos to help save you time, frustration, and help you learn faster so you can take the best care of your patients. So if you're wondering about how to organize your visits, what information you should be getting, um, what you should be documenting, especially with new patients, physicals, follow-ups, and sick visits, um, this video is for you. So this question comes from Aisha. So thanks so much, Annie, for uh, reaching out about that. Couple notes. This is a lot of information. I'm gonna be going over it pretty quickly to you know save you some time because I know that you're really busy but I've made a handout for you that you can uh, below this video that you can literally print out and um, take into each visit with you or you could or you could uh, download it now pause and uh, follow along with me and then the other thing to say is that I'm talking about adults I'm not talking about pediatric visits and I'm not really addressing all of the geriatric components of a physical exam that you could talk about and then another caveat to add is that this is your kind of like best case scenario I this is what I strive for but I do not get this every single time uh, and don't beat yourself up if you're not able to get all this information because it's a lot um, But this is the ideal for holistic care all the information that you'd want to get and and just gradually working towards that um, It really depends on the day that you're having the patient that you're dealing with the schedule like it's just do the best you can. So one other thing to add is that pre-operative exams deserve their own video. So if you've been asking about that, I'm not ignoring you. Um, I just wanna make its own video to, to touch on that as a topic. So I'm not gonna be talking about that today. Um, but jumping in, so new patient uh, appointments. For new patients, I, this is the information that I try to get on every single patient, but the ideal visit for this is when you have a dedicated new patient appointment. So. If you don't get to all of these things, it's okay. You can see them the next time and get more information. But uh, for new patients, what I do is, um, and this is maybe a controversial thing, but I, I open with, do you have any questions or concerns today? And it's crazy that that's a controversial thing, but a lot of people will tell me, you know, like, I don't open with that because I just don't have enough time and I'm not gonna be able to get the information that I'm looking for and they're gonna dump all these problems on me. Like, that's okay. I still ask anyway because you know what people are gonna be upset if you know if they're coming to a healthcare provider for a reason right and if you're not asking they're gonna they're going to bring it up anyway or they're gonna leave really unhappy right so it's okay if they throw 17 problems at you you don't have to address all of them but opening with that shows that you care that you want to help them and you can kind of break it down and set some limits in terms of like how many you can address today and how many you can address like at each visit and that, uh, in the video of how to make a plan of care I talk about this and I'll link to that um, video down below but I open with do you have any questions or concerns today next I look at medication so um, I'll, sometimes when I ask about past medical history, I'll ask if they have any medical problems and they'll be like, oh, no, no, I'm fine. You know, I do the same thing whenever I go to seek care. I'm at a specialist office and they're like, do you have any family history? Do you have any? I'm like, no, everything's fine. Like, that's not true. You know, it's just like without having cues. So that's that's one of the things I want to say about medication. So when you ask about medication, you get a lot of information. Like, are they on lisinopril, metoprolol, aspirin, things like that, right? And so... Additionally, um, it'll give you that information about medical conditions, but then once you go to the next step, which is past medical history, you can kind of give the further cues about, you know, any um, high blood pressure, diabetes, thyroid problems, asthma, et cetera, et cetera. So the next thing is past surgical history. So have you had any um, appendix uh, uh, surgery, gallbladder, C-section, uh, tubal ligation, like things that people don't necessarily think to volunteer to you. Next one is family history. And I touch on the big five to seven, which are um, cancer, diabetes, heart attack, stroke, um, hypertension, um, alcoholism, and mental illness, because people don't necessarily think to volunteer any of those things. And that's really relevant for their own personal health care and screening. Hopefully they'll also, they'll jog their memory to mention if they have like a strong family history of like rheumatoid arthritis or something like that or some genetic condition. So the next one is um, more social history. So if you're working with a medical assistant, hopefully they've already asked about smoking status, alcohol, and um, illicit or recreational drug use. Um, but, uh, and allergies, of course. But I, I endeavor to ask this because it gives you a lot of information also about their health risks um, in general. So who do they live with? Um, what kind of work they do if they're working, if they have um, any sexual partners, or what are the genders of their sexual partners, it's a, a, a kind of sensitive way of asking that question. That is a topic in and of itself getting a sexual health history, and so I'm not really going to jump into that into the, in this video, but I tend to get into that a little bit more at the physical exam, especially because people aren't necessarily uh, willing to share that when they first meet you. 
Um, but uh, occupational exposures are really important in terms of like what kind of work they're doing. And then, um, you know, the, the sexual history kind of gets into contraceptives. Do they take any contraceptives? Are they interested in that if that's relevant to them, um, depending on their partners and, and, and their behavior? So yeah, after that, I jump into um, looking at vital signs, um, uh, doing a kind of basic exam, um, heart and lungs. It really just depends on, on, their, on their complaints. And then ideally at that point, um, you're kind of concluding your visit. Um, and you're going to request the records from the previous PCP if you can. Um, if they're out of the country, I don't. I typically are not. I'm not able to get that information. But sometimes, like a family member who lives there still can take a photo of their vaccine record and send it to you, like stuff like that. Um, and then, depending on how your clinic works, you can have them come back for a physical in like a month, two months. Like it really just depends on how you do that. Um, a note about billing. Uh, this is another topic in and of itself. But um, when you have a first initial visit, um, if you do an ICD-10 code of um, you know establishing care. That's a Z code. So Z codes are reimbursed a little bit differently than a kind of like true code. So um, if you're, if for me, like, and, and, the, and the insurances that I typically, we typically take at my clinic, I'm going to be asking, obviously, if they have any concerns, but if they have no concerns at all, like no toe pain, no controlled asthma that we have a brief discussion about, nothing like that, I'll probably turn it into a physical because um, our physicals are 15 minutes at my clinic anyway. So I might as well just add on the physical part and then I can bill for a physical code, which is reimbursed differently than like a, a Z code. Um, anyway, but just something to think about. So the next type of visit is a yearly physical. And so, um, I take all that information from the, um, new patient visit, if I haven't gotten it already, I'm gonna be getting that information, I'm gonna be updating it, any updates to their you know, surgical history, family history, stuff like that, and I'll kind of review what I have there. Um, I'll talk about any new medications, things like that. Um, then I'm kind of adding on a full review of systems and a full physical exam. And so, um, again, this cheat sheet, if you haven't downloaded it already, if you haven't paused and downloaded, um, you can literally print this out and bring this into every single visit with you. And I did this for probably a year, if not more, of having a piece of paper with checklist or using my EHR to like ask them the review of systems, right? And that is not a marker of your intelligence and your capabilities as a nurse practitioner. Like that doesn't mean anything if you've memorized an ROS, right? Like it's all about giving safe care. So there's no shame in doing that. Um, I have a student with me right now and she feels like it makes her feel very safe. And it does because you just, you go through, you check it off and, and you've done your job. You're doing a good job right so um, so yeah so I'll do the full ROS the full physical exam I'll look at preventative so I follow USPSTF and then depending on the conditions looking at various guidelines that's like a big topic right but um, that's kind of a good starter one to go for like colonoscopy mammograms um, other types of screening, like any blood tests that they need to do, things like that. I also talk about plate method of um, dietary, kind of getting some dietary history, um, physical exam, talking a little bit more about the self, uh, physical activity rather, so like 30 minutes most days of the week, you know, if they're getting like 10 minutes, three times a day, it's the same as about 30 minutes every day, something light, just walking, like trying to get that done. If you can, you know, all the benefits of doing that, et cetera, et cetera. Getting a little bit more into sexual health history if they feel comfortable doing that. Um, talking about the dentist, uh, vision, stuff like that. So just doing your best. Again, this is a lot of information. And if you only have 15 minutes for your physical, if you don't get it all done, like just, again, try your best, have them come back sooner, like all that. So the next kind of visit is follow-up, uh, a follow-up visit. And so this really depends on the type of um, uh, reason that you have for follow-up. So is it diabetes, is it high blood pressure, is it thyroid? So I tend to focus on um, their symptoms. So like what are symptoms that it would be getting worse or it's uncontrolled or controlled? So diabetes, like polyuria, polydipsia, vision changes, um, numbness and tingling, like stuff like that. Um, and then uh, medications that they take and I ask them about adherence. And I, I try to open and ask in a very non-judgmental way of like, so how often, how many days per week do you take your medications, right? So uh, are you taking it some of the time, most of the time, when you remember every day? Because the people who are taking it every day are going to volunteer that information to you like very proudly. So <laughs> you're not going to offend anybody by doing that. And then I'm talking, uh, I'm going to be looking at, you know, the parameters of assessment, right? So is it a lab test? Is it the blood pressure? Is it their blood sugars? Like things like that. And kind of making adjustments from there. And then I'm deciding, I'm doing a relevant physical exam. So heart and lungs is pretty standard for most patients. But, you know, if you're doing a thyroid exam or you're doing a foot exam, if it's diabetic, like things like that. And then deciding when to come back. Um, is it one month? Because it's really uncontrolled. Three months, six months, or a year. And I can make an entire video just about that kind of decision making. Yeah. And then the next part is just looking uh, and I try to do this for every patient is just looking at their preventative. For most visits, I really endeavor to do this where I'm looking at, it's really nice in our checkout form that it correlates with the EHR of like when their last physical was, mammogram, colonoscopy, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and I can kind of just look and see like, oh, this patient's due for a physical this time, they're due for a mammogram this time. And so I can kind of schedule like when is the next time they're gonna come back 
um, depending on their chronic conditions and also like the preventative um, stuff. So sick visits is the last one I'm gonna be talking about today. So for sick visits, it's not always going to be the patient that you've done like your, your due diligence of work of getting all that baseline history. It's somebody that you might not know. I mean, if you're brand new, you probably don't know anybody, but once you get your panel going, like if you have a panel, that's how you operate. Like you might be seeing patients from other people's panels. So I'm kind of doing like a very quick um, refresher because that can take a lot of time to get all that information, right? So if they're coming in for a cough, um, I'm looking at their medications that they take, their medical conditions, um, and relevant family history surgical, like really briefly in terms of the histories page before um, I go in to see them. And, and then I also use my old cart method. So it's um, onset, location, duration, associated factors, uh, relieving factors, and time. Um, there's other ones like PQRST, like it's in that handout if you wanna check that out, but it kind of guides my questioning in terms of history gathering and all that. Um, for the for the problem based visit so like when did it start are you feeling better worse or the same are you taking any medications to help it does you have chest pain fever chills associated with your cough so you can refer back to the how to come up the plan video but um, the main kind of points for this type of visit is like what are the alarm signs when should they be feeling better when should they go to the ER if they're having like what symptoms would they have to present to the ER and then when should they follow up with their PCP so like looking at the last notes like do they are they due for a diabetes follow up are they due for hypertension follow-up are they do for their physical like kind of like looking as you're wrapping up to like when should they come back because like you should always be think always be thinking about like when should they come back as needed annual physical or chronic conditions you know because it's it's good health care for them I mean it's also good business for the clinic right so you can stay open and, and give good care to people but it's it's just about good care so that's it did you like this video if so hit like and subscribe and share with your NP friends so we together we can reach as many new grads as possible to help make their first years year plus a little bit easier um, and don't forget to sign up for the email list over at realworldnp.com you'll get the ultimate resource guide for the new NP uh, the videos will go straight to your inbox with little notes from me and bonus content that I just don't share anywhere else also be sure to find me on Instagram or Facebook if you use either of those I post even more uh, tips and tricks of the trade and I'd love to connect with you there. So stay tuned uh, for the next couple of videos. I'm gonna be doing the uh, preoperative exam. I'm gonna be doing two other lab interpretation videos. And another really exciting thing to think about uh, is that I've got a lab interpretation uh, crash course for new nurse practitioners that I'm working on. Uh, I just, I'm so excited for you to have this because I think it's gonna just make you feel so much better. It's the lab course that I wanted when I was a new grad and it's turning out, it's turning out even better than I had hoped. So that's gonna be in the next couple of weeks. So if you wanna hear about that, um, go to realworldnp.com slash labs and you can sign up there and um, I'll, I'll keep you posted uh, when I have some updates. Thank you so much again for watching. Uh, hang in there and I'll see you next time.